Hello everyone! I am recording this video because I want to help you playing Gypsy Jazz the best way you can. As you know, this music was created by Django Reinhardt during the swing era and the chords played in this music are very much influenced by the harmonies of the swing era. And today we tend to play these tunes without caring too much about the chords we play and we tend to do to play a lot of two five ones, to play a lot of major sevens and made and minor sevens chord, and to put them everywhere, which is something that was done a lot during the 60s after the Django Reinhardt period. Also, we often learn these tunes with friends. Friends show us a tune and the chords, and we don't really know where these chords come from exactly. And I think this is a good idea to take some time to know exactly what are the chords of the of the tune because we play them hundreds of times. So this video was made to help you avoiding playing these common mistakes. And my first tip will be to avoid the people who say these are the right chords but who didn't transcribe Django Reinhardt chords or the chords in Django Reinhardt music. So this was my first tip. What I will do now is I will give you a list of tunes with common mistakes. So I will start with the real mistakes and then I will continue with the, the chord variations that can't really be called mistakes. Let's start with Webster. This is the end of the A, A section, B flat 7 and then E flat. It's very common to, to do this. This is not the good way to play Webster. It's and then a, a short B flat 7. And you have to keep these changes during the improvisations. This is a very common mistake. Now another one on China Boy. The end of China Boy goes like this. F, C7, F. And then again C7. It's not G minor 7, C7. No, there is no G minor 7. It's one, five, one, five. Another very common mistake on minor swing is to play F7, E7 before the last A minor. It's not this, it's E7, B flat major, and then A minor. You can also play E7 and E7 or E7 and B flat 7 but no F7 during one bar and E7 during one bar. It's not this way minor swing is played. But you can play a, a quick F7, E7 at the end, at the last bar. So it goes like this. These were the three real mistakes. Now there are a lot of chord variations, I could say, that people don't really know that there are chord variations. So let's start with the, um, I would say, a funny one on Si tu savais. Many people play this tune this way. I mean, everybody plays this tune this way. Um, this is one way to play this tune, but Django never played it this way. It was like this. So there is no C9 in the head of Si tu savais. There is one in the intro, but on the head it, it's a C sharp half diminished. Another one on All of Me. 
all of me, why not take all of me, can't you see I'm no good without you? Many people play this chord D minor 7. It's not really a mistake, but it is something that Django never, never did. Playing a, a one chord, a minor one chord, a minor 7 or minor 9. No, this is, I would say, more or less modern jazz or after the 50s, <laughs> but not in Django music. Play it D minor or D minor 6. This is something that can seem like a detail, but it's really not. This is um, very typical of Django's music. Around the 50s, a few years before Django died, he tend to, he, yeah, he kind of used much more the modern harmony that was in bebop music, but on All of Me, which is kind of an old tune, play D minor or D minor 6. You can play it this way or this way, whatever, but don't play D minor 7 or D minor 9 because the resolution feeling is not so obvious. Another common chord variation, which is not really a mistake, is on the minor blues. Everybody, almost everybody at the end of this tune played this way. E flat 7, D7, and G minor. I would suggest you to play only D7 for two bars. This is a very, I would say, modern way of playing it, and Django never, almost never played it. Sometimes you can hear this one and this one, so A half diminished, or maybe C minor. D7, but E flat 7 and D7, no. You can hear it sometimes at the end of the tune. Um. Here you can hear it, but E flat 7 for one bar, avoid it. This may surprise you because you may think, yes, but there is one chord more and it's better because it's jazz and it's more. You know, it sounds more complicated. No. <laughs> Just listen to the minor blues of Django. Try to hear if there is an E flat 7 chord and you will have the answer. On I Love You, not the one from Cole Porter, but the other one. Um, the chords that are usually played are not the right ones. It's not a problem because it's, it also sounds okay, but the right chords are this one. Pop. Swing turn around F, A flat diminished, G minor 7 and C7. And no F, F sharp diminished or G7. No, it's not the same turn around. So usually it's played differently, it's played this way. So these chords are not exactly the same, but you can choose. On Djangology, the first chords are the same ones that you will find in Night and Day, for example, but transposed. So it's C sharp minus seven, um, half diminished, like this one, then C minus six, and then, and it's not exactly A7, G7, because some people think it's the same chords. No, the harmony is really close, but it's not, it's this chord and this chord. In Dream of You, on the A section, the bass stays on the five uh, chord. So it's in E major. So it's a B on the bass. Depending on the version, the bass player stays on the B, 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 or sometimes he does like B, F sharp, 
B, F sharp. But it stays on the B note, mostly, on the B chord, but it's the two that's played, so it's a B7 sus4. And just before going to E, it goes to B7. And it's not two. It's not that. You can play it this way, but originally it's not. In Django's Tiger, E7, F7. There is no F7 in Django's Tiger. Django plays it an arpeggiate uh, F7, but it's an E7 that's played in the back uh, by the rhythm guitar players. That's fine to play F7, everybody does it. I like to do it. But sometimes it's also just try to stay on E7 because on a traditional rag chord changes, you'll stay on E7. In J'attendrai. On this D minor, there is no there is not this G major with a major 7th. It sounds cool, but not on this tune, and especially not uh, with the head that goes on. If in the middle you play this C sharp, it won't sound really good. So G minor, G minor, G minor 7, G7. In Anuman. There is only this A7 with a flat 13th, so A7 augmented, and there is no E half diminished. No, only this one for one whole bar. In douce ambiance, at the end of the second A and the fourth A section, it's not A half diminished D7, it's A7, G7, G minor. So it goes like. Um, this is the most easy way to play it, and sometimes in the version you can hear Django plays. So it's this C sharp diminished is almost like an A7, D7 for, for one whole bar. And the last one on Out of Nowhere. The original chords are E flat 7. No B flat minor, E flat 7. It also sounds okay, not really with the head, but it's G major, E flat 7 only. I guess there are other common mistakes or chord variations of these tunes, but I think these are the most common ones. Um, just for you to remember, the basic major chord in Gypsy Jazzy is played major or 6 or 6 9. A major 7 chord is not a, bit, a chord that really comes from Gypsy Jazz. This is important to know. And you can play a major chord, but this should be a choice. And this is exactly the same thing with the minor 7th chords or minor 9. When you have a 1 chord, usually when you have a minor chord, it's minor or minor 6, except if sometimes, if it's a two, a two chord, like in J'attendrai, D minor 7, G7, and then C major. So this D minor is D minor 7, but for all the other chords that are not a 2, don't play them minor 7, play them minor 6 or just minor. The good guitar players that know well this style of music, I am thinking about Birelli Lagraine and also Angelo Debar, for example, but there are a lot of other ones. 
then know this, then know the original chords because they transcribe them, you can listen to their, their versions when, when they were young and you will hear exactly, usually exactly the same chords that in some version, for example, Si tu savais, played by Birelli Lagraine, it's the right chords, <laughs> the chords of, of Django. Um, you can also transcribe these chords yourself, this is the best way for me to to do it, I think, but it requires some time and some, some skills and it's not so easy to do. When I record a backing track, before doing it, I transcribe all the chords of the tune and usually I listen to various versions of the same tune to choose exactly what chord I'm going to play. Usually I don't pick the chords that are played by everyone. I pick the chords that are most commonly played by Django Reinhardt and quite often it doesn't fit exactly the chords that people usually play but this is also a way for me to help people knowing what are the original chords. So you can see, um, you can watch the um, chords of my backing tracks if you want to know a specific chord in a specific tune, if you have a question or if you think there is a mistake in one of my backing tracks send me a message, comment this video for example, I will be happy to to answer you and to see that maybe there is a mistake. Thanks a lot for watching this video, if you want to support my work you can on Patre Patreon and also on Tipeee, if you are French you will probably more likely choose Tipeee. Thanks a lot.